AI is a set or way of using a lot of data to produce a particular outcome. Now this outcome can be answers to questions. So very often if you phone a company, it's a chatbot who's actually answering your questions. It's also being used in the medical industry, for example, looking at cells to see if they're cancer cells and, and so forth. So AI is, is it's not a thing, it's a process. The progress that's been made in the last few years has been mainly in pattern recognition. Another big area is machine translation, being able to do speech-to-speech -speech translation in real time, where I could speak in English and someone could hear Chinese at the other end. The possibilities of artificial intelligence in e-governance are quite wide, from e-health uh, to driverless buses and public transportation. What we see today is actually mostly AI deployed in the area of detecting and identifying malicious behavior. But when we think about the next wave of cyber threats, only AI can be able to respond to that. There are many cases in which new technology has a natural tendency to increase inequalities. In the case of AI, it may be even more tricky. First, because of the nature of current AI, which thrives on huge amounts of data and the use of the technology is better done by the companies. So it's like a natural monopoly reinforcement system. Artificial intelligence cannot decide and, and create reasoning without the data itself. So the ability to control and to understand the type of data that exists, then I think this is an interesting beginning. Basically, now it's like the Wild West. So all the companies are collecting whatever data they can collect by law. A lot of the reasons why middle-class jobs are disappearing uh, is that automation is taking over many of those clerical functions and factory functions. Some of the AI researchers I work with, they told me quite excitedly, oh, we now know from the medical industry what seven conditions need to be in place in a person's life for that person later in life to develop a depression. Now, fast forward to a job situation. Are you not going to get a job because you may have five of these seven conditions? We become subjects to the AI's decisions. There are already misuses of AI for uh, misinformation, propaganda, manipulation of people the recent elections, an intelligent machine was able on one hand to profile all the citizens and then to create micro-targeting, advertisements and material that actually change the mind of people. Of course, humans cannot create that capability. And that actually presents a, a serious threat to democracies. There are several ways you can attack this uh, study of the human-machine relation. One is uh, by asking about the possible best cooperation between the human and the machine and uh, to go beyond the debate about machine replacing human to transform this into the collaboration problem. At the OECD, we're working hard to help set the course for AI in transforming fundamentally our lives and societies. And the critical question now for future generations is what kind of society do we want?